top of the morning to you. I hope everyone's well. What we're going to look at today is part 7 of Star Force, Star Citadels and Ancient Salt Waterways and um, looking at Aberdeen in the Aberdeen area. We're going to look again north uh, of Aberdeen to a little place known as Ellen and in particular a place known as Esselmont just to the north of Aberdeen so what I'm uh, suggesting in these videos is the land or the lands which we look at now I know it's various castles towers, round houses, round towers and whatever um, we're actually machines sitting on ancient salt waterways and what we have today as land and as the UK land mass as one land mass was actually numerous uh, valleys with salt water and castles and estates pulling down electricity and there were much more islands these were the British Isles rather than the British Isle as we see today but through time um, over the last five six hundred years these families the royals who have taken over through the Normans the Saxons the Jutes and the Viking invasions these people who took over and rewrote our history the likes of Robert de Bruce and William Wallace who were all Norman they, what I'm suggesting is they and their families took over the estates these powerhouses and then subjugated the people made themselves lords and over time they have collectively worked together these Norse, Saxon, Cutes, Viking and various other Norse bloodlines to to hide uh, to hide the ancient waterways and to hide the ancient systems which existed naturally. And uh, over time, these royalists and uh, usurpers have reshaped our land, draining much of the waters away, and ending the use of the machines now some would suggest that it was not through choice that it all ended but rather that it was a disaster which choked up all the waterways uh, leaving a deluge of mud and other debris burying much of these structures and removing them uh, present day further from the waters than they originally were. These castles and estates sat deep in within the water. And what we're going to look at today is, like I said, north of Aberdeen. And on previous videos I showed how uh, Newborough was a star fort. I showed that the Och McCoy estate uh, is an ancient star fort and uh, it sat in an embankment of water which was salt water which creates free power and free electricity I also in a previous video showed how Arthur the Great Bear I believe I showed that uh, moves over Ellen and we see here the Great Bear uh, laid out in the shape of Ellen I also, I don't know if I've said, we've got quite a few friends in the Ellen area, but um, and family, and it, this here I wanted to show, I did show I think in a previous video, I'll highlight this, uh, showing um, the star fort which is uh, uh, the Octa Ellen area, it's not known as Octa Ellen, it's known as Esselment Circle, I think it is. Yeah, the Esselment the Circle. And uh, I showed there how 
it's a giant star port and today I'm going to show this estate down here uh, I visited this estate and I'll drop some pictures and show you what I managed to get in and see it's a private estate so unfortunately I was not able to uh, to, <laughs> to have a full investigation let's say but uh, whilst I was looking at Google Maps a few weeks ago I noticed this very large wall garden and whenever you see a wall garden they're usually made of granite uh, or if you're down south they're usually uh, red brick but up in the north of Aberdeen uh, in the north coast and the north east coast they like to use the granite Aberdeen is the granite capital of the world and the oil capital of the world oil energy capital of the world so while looking at Google Maps I noticed this round tree here or this clump of trees and uh, what we're seeing here is all these trees were put in this estate apparently has been around since the 1400s um, there's been quite a lot of battles and fights over who owns the land and who controls the land but it's evident uh, from going around it that the land is very boggy uh, I've been there myself, wandered around and it's just swamp they put all these trees in uh, over the last few hundred years they've been uh, plowing uh, planting and plowing these trees uh, to try and soak up the water but the ground is still soaking and I believe this here was a burial mound uh, I actually have photos, we found a large um, a large sarcophagus uh, with another grey brick next to it all covered up which looked as if it had been damaged, I didn't want to open it so uh, I just took some pictures and I'll slip some of these pictures in but uh, our ancestors tended to put people on raised mounds and this mound is surrounded by a very thick wall uh, which you'll be able to see some, some of the pictures uh, which was to keep the water out so I believe that before they began draining all, all this quarrying and mining and agriculture and forestry to remove the waters the water would come in here in all this area and uh, it would hit the banks of the star fort here creating an energy uh, on this star fort which is Essament, uh, the Essament star fort but down here in the valley uh, and up here in this hill where the Essament house is uh, it's quite a large property uh, the water would pass through here and uh, the salt water would be gathered into the gardens which wasn't a garden, there were salt banks or salt pans so the tide would come in, the salt pan would fill up and the tide would go out just depositing all the salt and the salt would then using the towers uh, and the steeples of the buildings would the, the buildings themselves would pull down the electricity from the ether and this uh, salt hydro, hydro, hydrolysis mixture uh, maybe other elements put in there as well uh, was split using the form of no, we know as hydrolysis passing electricity through the water and it created free H2O brown gas uh, at the top of this uh, estate here we have a ruined castle which sits just in here again another tower uh, sitting on the, the foot of a very large star fort um, this here I haven't quite defined the exact shape of the star fort but this is certainly here it's certainly out here and this bit here comes out it's quite a large star fort normally the farms and the main farms define uh, large farms normally define the feet of a star fort but this one itself, Esselman, sits on a, a, a very strange slope on a very strange hill uh, this area here being the peak of the hill uh, so I believe this whole this whole uh, sort of heart shape uh, <laughs> yeah heart shape uh, is the star fort itself and uh, these salt pans at the bottom uh, were there to gather the power and uh, we can see further along here that the water travelled all the way through here this deep basin you can still see scars little tiny bodies of water and this is all bog we have these the river 
Ethan, Ethan, as we see it now. Now look how straight those uh, embankments are. Look how straight that edge is. And I've said this many, many times to people. Here's a big sacred mound again. Uh, this, this style, nature doesn't do straight lines. So we come up to here, which is a large quarry, and I've said on many occasions, because this is how it is, uh, these ancient waterways have been attacked <laughs> by quarries and aggregate companies uh, for the last few hundred years and they've removed the water leaving what we see today as a manufactured uh, trickle of a waterway and this is fresh water whereas at one time this would have all been salt pans and salt plains as the tide rose it would come in and fill this very large valleys and we still see here there's large bodies of of water everywhere and if it's not bodies of water it's large forested areas where corporations and forestry commissioners and all these people have came in and been funded by someone <laughs> uh, to plant the trees and chop them down in 20-30 years time and then plant more and that's been happening for the last few hundred years uh, that and mass agriculture and, and quarrying and mining has changed the waterways and the landscape to the point where we can no longer identify uh, the ancient boundaries of the ancient waters which once surrounded us and they've gave us this cock and bull story that glaciers melted and uh, carved all these these valleys that we see but anybody with any sense uh, just needs to you know we'll have a drop in here just needs to have a, a good look. These were not glaciers that that, um, that shaped us. Glaciers, uh, glaciers don't make uh, Teletubbies types of land where you've got all these ups and down bumps. Uh, a glacier would cut straight through, or well, that's what you would expect. So. Uh, and again, here we have a large quarry, uh, the Methic Quarry, um, which has removed all the water. Uh, here we have Methic, uh, just another, I've done a few posts on Methic being a starport. Uh, these these places everywhere, um, every town, every village, everything, they're all starports. And they're all sitting in ancient hidden waterways which weren't just uh, fresh water or salt waterways they were tidal waterways that created free power and free energy and these these um, these buildings these structures and this land masses in which on which these buildings are erected castles towers standing stones and so on these these buildings are uh, uh, these land masses are electrical devices sitting upon pillars in water, and it's just as the Bible explains to us that the whole earth is made up of pillars with starports upon them, and this is what they're hiding from us for now. So taking us back down to the estimate, um, what I was trying to show there is how the water uh, continues out uh, all the way to Methic basically. And when we zoom out you can actually see, you can see this deep valley there. If I was to put a topography map of Aberdeen uh, which shows you the, the, the water levels and how how the land sits above or, or below sea level you can see that all this area here uh, is below sea level and uh, it wouldn't have taken much in the past for the waters and the tides to come in and fill all these valleys and that's why we have these big estate houses like Haddo House and you know the props of Wythe I don't even know this massive tower Wythe prop of of Icy. Um, this is quite an interesting tower actually. Let's have a wee look at this tower. Let's have a look at some of the pictures 
uh, that we have of this. This just sits in a hill in Aberdeenshire, uh, just on the banks of the Ethan or Ethan, Ethan River, and it's just red brick here. Yeah. It's a massive uh, brick granite. Uh, it's, it's a facade that's on it, but it's just a massive tower that sits overlooking this huge ancient waterway. Uh, the waters have all gone, of course, and just the tower remains. And you can see how flat it is, just in that area. And here's the hill itself that it sits on, which, of course, the hill is the starport. And a uh, yeah, bit of a climb to get up to it. I have not actually been up visit visiting it personally. And as I said, there's the red brick inside, as you can see. And what we're looking at here is actually just a facade. Um, which was probably put on later but it's a red brick structure as most of these structures are um, so and you can see I don't know what that is down there whether it's hard or yeah. so I'm not going to play that so that's, as we can see that all the woods around about are, are pretty boggy uh, and broken and and here's an ancient well so let's go back and um, oops, you got, let's go back take us away from the prop of Lassie and back to Essel and what I've discovered here is not unusual it's just the same as anyone else so you have a starport here and the waterway comes around, you've got this a little satellite starport which of course is called the Esselment, uh, this Esselment Circle, named after the original Esselment Estate. And I say this to people as well, any time I meet them, I, we don't always get to share everything uh, and things can be missed on these YouTube recordings, but an estate is a state of mind. Uh, and that's really what these estates were, these lords, these uh, people who took the lands and from our ancestors when, when there was peace and harmony, they, they took the lands and, and they used them as a statement over the people who lorded over them. And they were called estates because of their electric status, that's what they were. And uh, Yes, and they've spent time indoctrinated, uh, uneducated, <laughs> and manipulated people. They had us working in the mills, they had us in lunatic asylums, until they got to us to the position where they could put us out into this world which they were hiding from us, because many of us had forgotten or lost the old ways and so we were allowed to go back out again but of course some people uh, had discovered these things again and they have created the first world war the second world war and subsequent wars and viruses and pandemics in order to keep the public's eyes off these things because it seems as if any time we began to un uh, understand our environment, these parasites did what they could, be it through wars or through slaughters, to stop us sharing this information. I personally have had a lot of conflict from the authorities um, because of the information that I share. They do not want us to know our environment and they certainly don't want us to break from their tradition of getting up early every morning and getting in our vehicles and travelling or traversing the embankments, the ancient embankments which are the roads today uh, in order to go into an office space or a work environment or an industrial merchant property uh, run by capitalists and corporate entities. They love us to get up and be slaves 
and they don't want us to know that energy is free and energy is all around us and that each one of us do not have to work or slave uh, in order to make ends meet it should never have been like that and it never was like that until these lords came to lord and master over us and what I'm trying to show people today with my research or part of this re the research is that the lands and the waters around us what we believe to be castles and what we believe to be uh, manor houses and estate buildings and botanic gardens and you know the likes these were never the richest playpens uh, they became that but prior to that these were machines which our ancestors I believe personally controlled managed and lived peacefully in unison with other tribes and other clans ensuring that whoever was passing through the waterways were not told or charged but they were allowed to move freely and I believe this is the case because the ghouls, the gales, the scots, the picks, the image of God are the people who protect the great tree and the great tree is the spine of Albion and these ancient isles or stars or star citadels or star forts are the great fruit or the great stars that which sit upon the branches of the great tree and each fruit has its corresponding or each star citadel uh, like these small stars and the star which has been hidden in this area of Ellen and stars such as the Ochmacoy Ochma estate and stars at uh, the Newborough and Balmedi where Trump and the Mini estate on the Mini house are these ancient stars or star forts or star citadels have their matching or corresponding houses in the heavens above and each of these three each of these large star forts normally have three large peaks three large hills or uh, three large towers or you know three large buildings upon them and I believe that these represent the three bright stars that are normally sitting above within whichever house so Ellen itself is designed uh, and laid out as Arthur the Great Bear Ursa Major or Ursa Minor uh, the little bear and the, and the large bear together and this is because in this area uh, this entire area is where the Ursa and Ursa Minor uh, encircle so why would our ancestors not uh, ha have stars corresponding to the to the three bright stars in the heavens uh, when they knew exactly how the heavens worked every day and this is what I'm trying to restore to people and to show people because people have lost a sense of worth uh, they have most people have no idea why they're here most people have no idea of the land around them uh, people are talking about energy uh, people talk about energy exchange and uh, currency money being a fraud but um, what we need to get our head around I believe is the currencies and the energies and the exchanges which went on between each of these uh, waterways and uh, ancient structures that sat along them once we understand I, I myself personally believe I have a fair a very good grasp on things uh, I can't just come out with things and recordings because most people would say well where's the proof um, well the proof is that I have actually walked in many many of these places and I can identify exactly how the waterways worked uh, these large houses like Haddo House uh, are, have salt pans their wall gardens were salt pans and basically the water would come in 
and the tide would come in, the high tide, and it would deposit the salt, and the estates would manage that salt water, providing themselves with hydrogen gas, electricity, and with the use of other substances such as mercury, liquid mercury, uh, radium, and various other elements which uh, and minerals which we have now been banned from using and uh, having access to these ancestors. Our ancestors uh, had nobody to come along and, and take them captive because they, they had everything they needed provided by the waterways and by the heavens above. <laughs>